Welcome everyone. My name is Eltamar and we are going to be beginning a playthrough of Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader. There are a couple things I want to preface before I start this playthrough. The first is that this is going to be a blind playthrough. No one should take this as a detailed and comprehensive walkthrough of the game, nor should they take this as like a build guide for characters. I have a sort of build in mind that I got from a friend of mine. He let me know some ideas for character builds, so I do have some idea of how I want to develop our character in the game. But again, I'm new to this rule set, and I'm new to this game, so... With those expectations firmly in mind, let's go to new game. We're gonna play on the main story, of course. There is no DLC out yet for it, that's fine. I am gonna play on just normal. Usually I go higher or hard. Actually, you know what? Let's play on... I am not familiar with the Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader system, so... I mean, we could try. We're not playing hardcore mode or anything. We could just reload if we die. Let's leave it on Daring. We'll give that a shot. Blah, blah, blah. Do I confirm this choice? Yep. I don't really know what we're doing, but uh, it'll be fine. We're going to customize a character. Our portrait. What do I want us to look like? So we are going to be a Psyker officer, and I think that maybe I want to go... That's a Commissar, straight up. Um, let's see what else we got. The Sister Battle kind of looks like it. Uh, no, sort of like a... I don't really know. Yeah, she's got a Bolter, so closest I think would be a Sister of Battle, but interesting. Um, he's got a Plasma Pistol. That's kind of cool. And she's clearly some sort of Noble, and so is he. I want a, a good Psyker. Ooh. Okay. Leaning towards more Noble on that one, but uh, still... Oh, there we go. There we go. We got ourselves some sort of Psyker staff there. We almost look like a librarian or something. Obviously, not we're, we're not a Space Marine, but more librarian-y. So let's go with that portrait. It's a pretty cool portrait. I like it. All right, appearance. That kind of suits it a little bit. Yeah, that's pretty close. All right, we'll leave that the way it is. That looks pretty cool. Uh, we will take some different hair, though, because... Also, actually, if we take hair, then we have the cool implant things on our screen. So let's leave ourselves bald. I'm going to get some tattoos, though. I want some tattoos there, and I want some tattoos on the other arm. Do I want these ones, or do I want different ones on either side? Oh, shoot. I chose the same side. My bad. Let's go back to this one and grab... Oh, you can overlap them. Is that what happened? Let's take a look. Yes, it just overlaps them. That's cool. But also looks weird. That's fine. All right, let's grab more tats. We're going to be all tatted up. There's no torso tattoos. I also don't know if we're going to be able to see these tattoos at any point, so it might be entirely pointless. Let's know everyone. Know, let's make sure everyone knows that we are for the Imperium and we are not going to be a heretic. I kind of like the augmentation that we have. But can we get a second augmentation? We've got one. But can we have like a gold jaw? No, that looks silly. How about this weird head thing? Yeah, I'm actually okay with that. That looks pretty cool. Let's get that. Set for the Fon Phalanceus Annals. Deliver their demise. I'm not sure if that sound is loud enough. I'm gonna... Oh, cancel. Okay. How do I... I can't get into sound. We might not have loud sounds in the beginning, so we'll see. Stay faithful, and you will be rewarded. Sure. Glance batteries, volley! Engage the engines. Actually, I like that voice. Let's do that one. Pragmatic male. Uh, world. So we can choose between death world, which gives us strength, agility, fellow negative fellowship, positive toughness, and negative intelligence. That one's not good for us because we're going to be getting fellowship. I think, pretty um, exclusively for a while anyways, according to the build I've been given by friends. Voidborn is the one that I was recommended, giving us willpower and intelligence, but lowering our strength. We won't be using much strength, though, apparently, so... And apparently Jinx is an extremely good ability, so... 
Uh, Hive World for Strength and Numbers is also pretty good. Fellowship and Agility. Forge World Intelligence Toughness. But Forge for a Purpose doesn't really help us too much, I don't think. Humanity's Finest is always good. Apparently you can, set, or you can select any characteristic except for Weapon Skills or Ballistic Skills and get a plus 10 bonus, which is pretty great, honestly. And then Fortress World gives us Perception, Willpower, and then a bunch of talents that we can take. But I think we're going to go Void Board, and it's the one that was recommended for me, so... Let's take a look at it in greater detail. We get Fortune. A Voidborn character can reroll any failed attack, dodge, parry, characteristic, or skill test with a 20% chance of success. This chance cannot be greater than the base success chance for the roll. Additionally, any enemy dodge or parry against a Voidborn character has a 20% chance to fail after a successful roll. So that's pretty cool. Uh, we can also get Bloody Mess. Whenever we score a critical hit, there's a 10% chance to double the damage. Contagious Luck. Using a non-damaging ability on an ally grants that ally the ability to reroll any failed attack, dodge, parry characteristic, or skill test with a 20% chance of success for one round. Chance can't be greater again. And using a non-damaging ability on an enemy grants them 20% chance to fail them. Okay, cool. Uh, just a flesh wound. A voidborn character has a 20% chance to survive after taking lethal damage, surviving with one wound instead. Jinx. While a Voidborn character has more than 50% wounds, all chances of all creatures, including enemies, in a 3 cell radius are increased by 10%, and while we are less than 50%, all chances of all creatures, including enemies, in a 3 cell radius are decreased by 10%. Sorry, 10% of our both of them. Alright, let's grab this. Oh, so be smart as well. Anytime an ability or talent uses the Fellowship bonus, a Voidborn character can instead use Intelligence bonus if it's higher. Additionally, Voidborn characters can always upgrade intelligence, even if their archetype does not allow it. Alright, let's grab this. We are going to be a... What did they say? Hang on, I gotta read this again. We are being a sanctioned Psyker. Psykers are feared and distrusted, but are nonetheless valuable assets to the Imperium. The role of the Adeptus Astra Telepathica is to recruit, identify, and classify those found to possess psychic abilities. The most powerful who somehow survived the rigorous sanctioning rituals are selected to serve on the battlefield. The mind of a sanctioned psyker is steeled against the manifold dangers risked by wielders of warp powers. You were one of those found worthy to serve humanity and have miraculously survived the perils of the warp. Which is... This dangerous phenomenon may occur whenever veiled degradation reaches 15 and a major psychic power is activated. Chance of this happening is 10 plus Psy rating plus Veil Degradation percent. Perils of the Warp are dangerous to anyone in the vicinity of the Psyker. Their manifestations can push away characters, damage them, summon demons, fill the area with emotive force charges, and much more. Perils of the Warp are unpredictable and extremely dangerous. Okay. No damaging Psyker powers count as weapon attacks, counting towards the normal attack limit per turn, and gaining all the benefits of abilities and talents, increasing the damage of attacks. For example, a soldier using the Running Gun ability will be able to use damaging Psyker powers twice one per turn, and an operative's analyzed enemy's ability affects the damage of damaging Psyker powers. Cool beans. Uh, and then I was told to do Sanctic, but we're going to look through all of these. Uh, Biomancy for the Biomancer. Biomancy focuses on manipulating living flesh and biological processes. Biomancers can heal wounds and alter physical characteristics. Iron Arm. The target gains... Plus 10 times plus 4 times Psyker size rating, strength and toughness until the end of combat. Enfeeble, we can. Until the end of combat, all targets within the area suffer negative 5 plus 3 times Psy rating penalty to strength and agility, and plus 3 plus 2 times Psy rating percent increased all incoming damage. Cool. Invigorates, restores hit points to the. or wounds, sorry, I should say, to the target. It also removes stunned, bleeding, fatigued. Blinded, immobilized, staggered, and fresh injury effects. I'm not going to go through all these. Let's just pick the one that we're going to go into. Sanctic Powers. A concentration of faith, Sanctic Powers are used by pious psychers to protect allies and smite heretics. Word of the Emperor. All allies in a circle within a 5 cell radius gain. 1 plus Psy rating divided by 2 resolve until the end of combat. Every additional stack of this effect increases the resolve bonus by 2. Urge Soul deals the damage. Damage is increased by 50% against Xenos, by 100% against Chaos Worshippers or Drukhari, 150% against Demons, and by 50% if the enemies already damaged the Psyker or any of the Psyker's allies this combat. These damage bonuses also affect any damage bonuses from other sources. 
doesn't affect targets that lack souls, like robots. Light of the Emperor, all allies healed by word of the Emperor are healed for the calculation. This psychic power can only be used while there's at least one ally affected by word of the Emperor. Hammer of the Emperor, all allies affected by word of the Emperor gain the Hammer of the Emperor effect. Next time they deal damage, this damage is increased by the calculation and the effect is removed. This psychic power can only be used while there's at least one ally affected by word of the Emperor. Shield of the Emperor uh, does until the start of the Psyker's next turn, all allies affected by word of the Emperor increase, increase their deflection by that calculation. Same thing with the word of the Emperor thing and Sword of Faith. This psychic power costs 50 momentum and can only be used when momentum is 175 or higher. Until the end of combat, the weapon in the Psyker's hand is replaced by a sword made of sheer will. It has a single target attack and an area attack, like a two-handed sword. It can be used to release a cone of fire or a line of fire, like a flamer. The damage of the sword is the same as that of Purge Soul, with all the same bonuses. If the Psyker used a force weapon, all the bonuses from that force weapon remain. For the purposes of talents and other bonuses, the Sword of Faith counts as a force weapon. This power can be used again, increasing the damage of the sword by, the psych by plussing the Psyker's, Psyker's resolve. We also get Destined. Psyker's armor increases by 5%. This bonus increases by 5% at the start of every round of combat except for the first. Edge of Dawn. Enemies adjacent to the Psyker suffer 10% more damage. Eternal Glory. The first time that momentum reaches 200 during the Psyker's turn, the Psyker gains plus 5 to all characteristics, plus 1 to resolve, plus 1 to deflection, and plus 1 to damage and that the Psyker deals until the end of combat. Hymns of Hatred. Critical hits scored by anyone within the Psyker's line of sight, including the Psyker themselves. Increase the Psyker's critical chance by plus 1% until the end of combat. Psalm of Heroes. The Psyker's Psy rating is increased by 1 until the end of combat every time an ally uses a heroic act. And then Sanctified Slayer. The Psyker's critical hit chance is increased by plus resolve percentage. So, that's where we're at on that one. Um, continuing onwards, what are we doing now? We need to, shape, we need to pick a Triumph. We need Persuasion or Coercion. I'm going to go with Persuasion. We're going to be more of a good person, I think, in this playthrough at the very least. And Grim Portance. So we can get Negative Logic, which I don't like, I don't think. And negative Awareness. Or Negative Lore Warp. Oof, those are all kind of bad to have. I think I'm going to take the warp one, I guess. An error during the sanctioning process brought you many hours of agony, which nearly cost you your life. They didn't mention which of those stakes, so I don't actually know. Uh, we are taking Officer, I believe, as our archetype. So we're going to start with that. Things We're going to be really focusing on buffing people and then launching out some nukes, I think, is what we're going to be working on. So um, officers use their willpower and fellowship to improve the combat capabilities of their allies, turning them into even greater threats on the battlefield. Core focused, extra turns, single target buffs, rescuing allies, and momentum. So we get bring it down. Oh, these are keystone features. Bring it down is grants an ally an extra turn with plus two AP and no MP. Voice of command force or focuses forces an ally to fully push themselves, increasing their characteristics by plus ten for one round. Finest Hour does grants an ally an extra turn with full AP and MP. During the extra turn, there's no attack limit. Cool. It wants us to focus on Fellowship and Willpower and Persuasion and Commerce. Super. Do I need to pick anything of that or does it just do it? I guess we go to Characteristics next. Okay. So where are we at on this? We're probably going to go... We need Fellowship, right? That's our big thing. Uh, what do I want my fellowship to be? At least more. How many do we have access to? 20 points. Um, probably more willpower as well. We want a little bit more toughness, I think. And someone mentioned we want some a little bit of agility, so I think that's what we're going to go with here. Yeah. And as for skills, I don't think it really mentioned them, but I'm going to go with... What am I going to go with? I guess... Commerce is good. And persuasion, I suppose. Yeah, those are those two look good. We need to be able to do bargaining and we need to persuade people, and that's kind of what we were looking for, so good enough. We only have this sword class frigate. We're gonna call you not sword class frigate. Hmm. <laughs> I 
What was the name of my ship from Helldivers 2? It's so dumb, but I think it actually suits this. I gotta look it up. Hang on. Hold tight. I remember, I think I have a picture of it somewhere. That's the dumbest, um, name for a ship. Alrighty, I've looked through my logs and found the name of the ship. We are going to be flying the elected representative of individual merit. Truly the most middle management of ships. Sounds like an award given out at like a corporate meeting. Anyways, let's move on. Oh, we get to choose our name as well. So, oh, we get to edit our name. There we go. Let's just make Eltamar our name. And that's going to be the character we are going to go with. Let's see how this goes into the game time. The higher a character's weapon skill compared to their opponents, the easier it is for them to parry that opponent's attacks. Interesting. We're on the upper decks. With a giant terrifying skull statue handing down some sort of document and a sword that is very large. That is a giant door for a spaceship, but it's very cool looking. All right, we're overlooking some sort of temple, it looks like. <laughs> An excellent place for contemplation. One has the best view of the cathedral from here. Mesmerizing, wouldn't you say? An impeccable manifestation of the God Emperor sublimity. The man who has approached you is gazing down into the depths of the vast temple on one of the lower decks. I've actually, I think, changed my plan slightly in terms of our alignment. I think I'm going to be more evil than I thought I was going to be. Yeah, let's do that. Do you have a particular reason for disturbing me? My apologies. I did not seek you out to pester you with unwanted attention. The man turns to us and bows. <laughs> Allow me to introduce myself. Kunrad Voitfeer, Master of Whispers in the employ of her ladyship rogue trader Theodora von Valencius, at your service. I haven't had the pleasure of speaking with you in person before. Voitvir bows his head and focuses his attention on us. I have no intention of introducing myself. <laughs> I am afraid I wouldn't be able to hide my familiarity with who you are and where you come from, no matter how respectful I try to be of you and your wishes. After all, it is my primary duty to be well informed. <laughs> Moreover, whatever bloodline name you used before, it no longer matters much. Voidvir smiles guiltily. I will be frank with you. You may forget your past titles, no matter who gave them to you, or what their origins are. From the moment you and the other candidate were brought aboard this void ship, your fate changed. You now serve Lord Captain Theodora von Valencius, and carry the burden of an heir of this house. Henceforth, you share your dynastic name with her ladyship. Bear it with honor. Lord Captain, a strange title for Lady Theodora. Such are the traditions of the Imperium. Lord Captain is the title that was established in the annals of the Lex Imperialis, at the time when the first rogue traitors entered the Gold Emperor's service. And therefore, it is sacrosanct. Okay. Why am I aboard this vessel? Why have I been brought here? So that you may fulfill your blood duty. Whatever obligations you had before. They are henceforth null and void. By order of the Lord Captain, you have been requisitioned to serve the rogue trader, indeed blessed by the God Emperor. Oh, okay. 
Sure. Your former position may have been different from conventional service as part of one of the institutions of the Imperium. But from now on, a different fate awaits you. One chosen for you by the Lord Captain. I advise you to come to terms with this reality as quickly as possible. You have a curious title, Master of Whispers. What are your responsibilities? To put it plainly, I am the head of the network of spies and informers who serve the interests of House von Valencius. I uncover weak links both among Lady Theodora's retinue and in the ranks of her rivals. I eliminate our vulnerabilities and exploit those of others. Tell me about the one on whose, sh whose ship I have found myself. I would rather not discuss the Lord Captain behind her back. Especially not on board her ship. No one knows better than I that whispers are wont to attract particularly close attention. <laughs> oh, suffice it to say that a ladyship is the bearer of the sacred warrant of trade and a woman of immense power and entitlement. However privileged your position may be, I ask that you do not incur her anger by being disrespectful or obtuse. Lady Theodora despises both qualities. Voidvier laughs and shakes his head. Okay. You say I'm one of the rogue trader's heirs, so there's another candidate? There is. And you will meet him soon enough. Voidvier shrugs slightly. I assume you had some goal in mind when you decided to seek me out. Let's address it. But of course, I have come to invite you to a meeting with Lady Theodora. I imagine you have many questions for your patroness, and I'm sure she has just as many questions for you. It is regrettable that you haven't yet had an opportunity to speak. It has been an arduous voyage thus far. As indeed, okay. The Lord's Captain and Master Edelthrad von Valencius are conversing on the observation platform. Let us join them there. Okay, and dialogue. Theodora von Valencius desires to personally meet with the person... No, oh, I just switched. Okay, never mind. We'll go to the journal. Don't... I know how to move. Personally meet with the person who recently brought a Borgard flagship. A storm is brewing over the dynasty, so the Lord Captain has something important to share with her heir, if she ever gets the chance. Conrad Voidvier, the Master of Whispers, serving on the Von Valencia's dynasty, has graciously offered to escort the dynasty heir to Captain Theodora. Lord Follow Captain my Theodora. What are our abilities? We have Word of the Emperor, which gives resolve. And we also have Voice of Command, which... We can increase this, increase characteristics of our allies by a bit. We also have a gun, just a stub revolver. Not a very good gun, but it is there notwithstanding. And we can interact with objects. Let's see what we can do in this room. Tab to highlight things. A massive conference table, obviously crafted from real wood, a resource of incredible value aboard a void ship. Let's try and show the data on the vid screen. The sacred mechanism has been interfered with due, without due reference. The duration of the data processing cycle, cycle has tripled. Whoops. Let's try this one. Yeah, same thing. Incomprehensible information is displayed on a large screen above the cogitators. You can... That was very fast. You can make out references to the unfamiliar systems and worlds among the numbers and logister... Logistier... Logistic car symbols. It keeps vanishing fast. There's got to be a way to... Keep that around longer. Um, not that. Accessibility? Font size. I don't want font size. I just want length of time something stays in. Maybe it's under game. Tooltip delay. Uh, that's not the one we need. Those are pauses. Hang on. I'm going to see something. Is there... Like a... There we go. We can just have this and we'll read it off that. Because it vanishes really fast. 
Alright, let's talk to some people. There's a Technomat. Lay people interfering in the operation of the sacred mechanisms disturbs the machine spirits. In the name of the Omnissiah... Omnissiah, I can talk. Holy crap. Refrain from any further profane acts. My bad, sorry. Deck enforcer and workers... Okay, we'll leave these people alone. None of them are named, so I'm guessing they're not super important. Someone is praying at a shrine. A new challenge for me? I guess we're going to Kunlrad. The game has stopped for a moment. I think our armor looks One of cool. the Fon Valencia's trophy rooms. Perhaps you would like to take a look around. Is that a Lehman Rust tank? With the Lord Captain. What's happening? Run! The servitors have gone oh, berserk! Damn. Well, this is less than ideal. Oh, he just got murdered. And of course, they're using the Empire's, or Emperor's own flashlights to kill servitors. You've been ambushed. The battle begins. Alright, let's click the button at the top to start the battle. That officer missed. That servitor's coming up. And is... Murdering that man, murdering both men. Holy crap. Okay. He just analyzed enemies and did joint analysis. All battles in the game are turn based and take place on a grid. On their turn, a character can move, attack, and use their abilities. Select a cell and move to move the character there. MP is how far we can move. That's fine. Okay. Continue. I'm going to not move. I'll move to like here, I guess. And, okay, action points, AP, are displayed on the other side. We have four, it looks like. To make attacks and use abilities in combat, a character must spend action points. Every attack is an AP value. Okay. I think I figured it out. I know what we're doing. Let's, uh... The voice of command. Absolutely not! Oh, we can voice command other people. Okay. Um... We can give everyone some resolve. Word of the Emperor, of course. Let me just take a pot shot at this guy. We did some damage. And I think once we attack, we can't move, it looks like. Fair enough. All too easy. Become better, people. We're voice of commanding you to do so. And that's end turn. Cool. You missed. You hit. Good job. That guy's probably gonna die. Definitely going to die. I really need you to do more than just Nothing analyze this guy. So let's move behind him. Oh, we can't wait a shot. Damn it, I should move back first. That was my bad. We might actually just straight up die. Let's heal everyone up, or resolve everyone up, I guess. And he doesn't want that. We can't do Not it to ourselves, so. Two damage, good. He's about to die, though. Really could use some help here. You could, you know, do something. That would be good. We have no Psyker powers, which sucks. I'm gonna move back here somewhere. And then take a pot shot. Oh, can't shoot from there. Can I shoot from there? Yes, I can. Suits my purposes. Six damage, which is not enough damage yet. And we'll just keep building up our resolve, I suppose. It says it gives more per stack. How do we see the stacks? Stacks five of a hundred. Okay. He dodged. Perfect. At least maybe he'll do something this turn. No, he's just going to do the same things. Oh, good, he did shoot. The glory of the Imperium. You can scarcely believe it on a day like this. What suspiciously poor timing for such an accident. Servitors malfunction on the officer's deck, 
at exactly the same moment when the rogue trader and their heirs are gathered here. I have blocked all passages between the upper and lower sectors of the residential decks. If this is a deliberate attack, it should stop the culprits from advancing their plan. Without taking his eyes off the bodies on the floor, Voidfear removes the Voxcaster from his belt and speaks a few quick orders into the device, then he turns to us. Oh, these are teammates of ours, it looks like. Spread out, no one is allowed to enter the premises. Stations. I'm afraid I must remain here. For Lady Theodora's safety, I have to oversee the execution of these orders personally. I hope you will have no difficulty reaching the observation platform on your own. It is just at the end of this corridor. The lines on Voidbeer's forehead soften and his voice regains its usual courtesy. The Master of Whispers gives us a curt bow. Okay. So we can look at some of this stuff. The wires in the servitor's head are still smoldering. It would seem the cause of this malfunction was the short-circuiting... Hold up. Of the motive force. Okay. Tarantula sentry gun constructed with the blessing of the Adeptus Mechanicus using a standard template construct in the manufactorums of Kiava Gamma. Lehman Rust battle tank reclaimed and restored by the grace of the God Emperor, the first to breach the capital walls during the pacification of Vortez Catan. Or Chan, Chan, whatever, I don't know. A violet alloy which, upon closer examination, appears to be a handcrafted object, symbols carved with a primitive tool, are visible on the surface. A black shard resembling obsidian, if you look closely you can discern a strange, barely perceptible glow inside the artifact. That's worrying. A massive golden amalgam interspersed with sparkling particles. The stone on the pedestal is no doubt solid, but its surface shimmers and changes hue, as if someone has captured a piece of the turbulent sea within the rock. We can't really zoom in too far, but it's a pretty cool looking rock. A strange object that resembles sea coral. The porous surface is pitted, a sign that it's been underwater. And a grey-green crystal with white veins. A low hum can be heard coming from the artifact. Other than that, we have an empty thing here. What is this one? The exhibit is unfinished. Another symbol of House von Valencia's valor will be displayed here at some point in the future. Uh, no one has a name, so I don't think we need to talk to any of them. Is there anything on these bodies that we can pick up? What about the one we killed? Well, I should say the one that he killed, because we didn't really kill it. We'll get better as com at combat as time goes, I hope. I guess we'll find out. I won't tolerate weakness. Exactly. See? We got this covered. How much experience did we get for that little fight? A little bit. We need 100 for the next level, and we've gained, not, or gained 10. So, not much, honestly. Though I think we're basically out of time on this video. We're going to do half an hour intervals like normal. So what I'm going to do is leave this video here. In the next video, we'll continue on through... Those people just appeared. Oh, there's a draw distance. <laughs> you see people appearing and, re and disappearing. That's interesting. All right. Like always, if you have any suggestions or comments, please leave them below. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Again, this is a game I'm unfamiliar with, so suggestions and comments are more than welcome on this, and I would welcome them uh, because I might miss things. There are definitely things I'm going to miss. I'm not going to make every decision the way most like everyone wants because there's a, a line between doing the optimal path for the game and the line between doing my playthrough of the game, which is the way I would want to experience it for the first time. So I'll, make, I'll try and balance that as, as much as possible, but otherwise I'll see you all in the next video. Take care.